So today we're going to talk about the economics of cleaning your own grain, how cleaning is actually done, and we're going to go in depth over one of our grain cleaners. Now there are two main reasons why we clean seed. One of them is for export, meaning that uh, we're selling it en masse to somebody and there's something in it that they don't want. The other reason, which is more common, is for seed. Now your city folks may be asking, what do you mean for seed? Don't you buy your seeds? No, not all of them. Especially here in Western Canada, we can do what's called brown bagging, where we get to take our own grain that we grew, clean it for seed and put it back in the ground. It saves us from having to pay some big company a whole pile of bucks for essentially the same thing, but in a bag with fancy naming on it. So very quickly here, this is yellow mustard. I put it through my hand screens that I have just to get it cleaned quickly. Here is the straw and chaff and pods and stuff that came out. Now the straw and chaff and pods, those are what we're really after when we're cleaning for seed. So what difference does a little bit of chaff and straw and stuff make? Well, city folks, this here is our air drill. He'll be featured on an episode of five minutes or less or several. Anyways, everything has to go through these little tiny holes here. All the grain has to go through there. So if there's stuff in the grain, like straw and chaff and stuff, it plugs those holes. And then we get left with stripes in our field when nothing grows, except weeds. And that doesn't make anybody any money. So us guys here in Western Canada, we often farm an awful lot of acres. What we can see behind us here, you can see not quite 600 acres all the way to the horizon there. And our farm farms about 3,700 acres. So how much seed does it take to do that? Well, in between one and three bushels an acre. So we clean about 5,000 bushels of grain every year. Let's run some quick math. So we have to clean about 5,000 bushels of grain every year, roughly. We can haul about 450 to 500 bushels on a truck to town at one time, roughly. Now, of course, it's six, sometimes more different grains, so it takes more than just 10-ish trips. So let's even say it takes us 14 trips. Our closest seed cleaning plant is um, I think 40 kilometers to the one and about 60 kilometers to the other. If we want to clean one truckload of grain, we have to do three things. We have to haul it in as rough grain on a truck. We have to haul home the clean grain on a truck and then haul home the screenings on a truck. And usually you can't haul it in, wait for them to clean it, and then load it up and take off again. It doesn't work that way. So sometimes you have to make three trips into town in order to clean one type of grain, or one truckload of one type of grain. Have you seen the price of fuel lately? For one of our diesel tandems, it takes about 50 cents a kilometer just for fuel. And that's not counting owning the thing, maintaining the thing, fixing the thing, insuring the thing, or insuring and licensing the drivers to operate it. I figure it's probably about a dollar a kilometer for one of our trucks. So you're looking at $120 per round trip to one of the long, long uh, sea clean plants, or about $80 per trip for one of the shorter ones. Let's just call it an even hundred per trip. $2,800 in trucking-ish. And then we have to pay for the actual cleaning itself. Now from what I can hear, because I haven't been doing it for a while, it's about between 50 and 60 cents a bushel to clean grain. So we're looking at about mm, close to $3,000 for cleaning. But there's another expense. You gotta pull all the grain out of the bins, haul it to the cleaner, haul the clean grain home, put it in the bins, all the screenings home and put it in the bins too. But we have to do this for cleaning at home, so I guess we'll call that a wash. You know, it's not a wash. A little bit of a hobby problem that my dad and I have. We may have a problem. So $2,800 to get it there and back and $3,000 to clean it at a plant. So we're looking at, let's just call it just over a dollar per bushel to get our grain cleaned at a seed cleaning plant. That is a cost of over and above what we have to do in the yard anyways. So we figure transportation is gonna be roughly 2,800 bucks about $3,000 for cleaning. Here, that's just about $6,000 for 5,000 bushels of cleaning. Now, we have to include something called, uh, well, that's farming factor, which means you increase all of your projected costs by about 25%. So we're gonna add another $1,200 onto there. So $7,200 for 5,000 bushels. So it costs us roughly $7,000 a year to clean our own grain at a seed cleaning plant. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we'll save ourselves $7,000 by cleaning it ourselves, but it is a lot cheaper for us to do it in yard because we're not driving back and forth and we're not writing a check out to the seed cleaning plant every single year. There are other advantages to cleaning our own grain, like this year, because I was set up, one of my neighbors called me, and now I'm doing a little bit of custom cleaning, which helps put some cash in our pocket. Can't do that if I'm cleaning in town. But even if it makes financial sense for you to clean your own grain, there may be other reasons you don't want to mainly because you don't want to. Now see, I have about five years experience in the grain handling industry. I worked in a couple of grain elevators and I worked on a crew building and fixing grain handling systems like cleaning plants and elevators. So I have a lot of experience in this industry and I kind of sort of have a general idea of what I'm doing, but I enjoy it. If you don't enjoy cleaning your own grain, then don't clean your own grain. That's what seed cleaning plants are for. It is easier to do it that way. 
it kind of is a bit of a pain in the butt to do it yourself. Now, there's one more really, really large reason why we want to clean our own grain, and that is that we're starting to do intercropping, where we're growing more than one crop in the same field at the same time. We'll get into that in depth later. But anyways, what it means is that we may have thousands and thousands of bushels of two grains that are mixed together that we need to get cleaned. If we had to haul all of that to a seed cleaning plant and haul it all home, as well as pay for it to get cleaned, that might make the crop no longer economically viable. So it's really important to us to be able to clean that ourselves. But cleaning our own grain certainly has its downsides. We get a lot of crap, big mess in the yard like this that we end up having to deal with. Not to mention you have augers and tractors and trucks and machines all over the yard. That's not to mention how much time it takes. It'll probably take me about a week and a half or so to clean all the grain that we gotta clean. Sometimes it'll take me two weeks, depending on how many we're planting. So how long would it take to clean at a seed cleaning plant? Well, the actual physical cleaning isn't gonna take very long. They can clean really, really fast, like 300, 500 bushels an hour. So the actual cleaning isn't gonna take very long. The problem is, all of the travel. It takes us about 45 minutes to get into town with the truck, maybe 45 minutes to get back. Plus we have to, you know, we talked about, it's gonna take us 25 different trips roughly to take care of all this. And we have six different products. And the seed cleaning plant, they do this product and then this one and then this one and then this one. So you may end up having to haul six different times between say October and April on their women and call. So you could probably easily figure it's gonna take you a day to a day and a half per crop to get it cleaned, which is about the same that I end up doing on the farm but you spend most of your time driving instead of standing around babysitting machines. So you could probably just about call the time a wash. But there is a distinct advantage to cleaning in the farmyard, and that is while I'm grain cleaning, I can be doing other things like moving other grain or fixing machinery or whatnot. I can't be doing that if I'm driving back and forth to town all the time. Okay, so now let's start talking about how you actually separate grain. Now see, grain has five different specific characteristics that make it easy to separate them, sometimes. So here we have five different types of grain that we grow on our farm. Hard red spring wheat, flax, red lentils, field peas, and yellow mustard. And the five characteristics you can separate grain based on are length, width, density, color, and shape. We'll most be dealing with length, width, and density since those are only the ones that can be done by mechanical means. The others need to be done with electronics. So now we're gonna use a set of hand screens to separate by width. We're cleaning some yellow mustard. Here's what it looks like before. It looks pretty clean. But as you'll see when we run it through a set of screens here pretty quickly, there's actually a few things that get caught. This is what we get in the scalping screen. We get a bunch of chaff and some other, uh, some wild oats and some other gross stuff. So we shake it some more on the sift screen and you'll see what we can get out with the sift screen. Again, on the top, it still isn't perfect because you need more than one stage to clean grain properly. So there's the cleaned mustard, but there's some more screens to be had and that's in the pan. Here's some frosted mustard kernels, split mustard kernels, bunch of weed seeds and other crap. But you didn't notice them when they were all blended together. But there's just what came out of that small little mustard sample with a width separation. So as we saw there with the hand screens, one type of separation wasn't perfect. We just used a width separation, which is the screens, and we still had some chaff and some other things left in the clean grain sample. We even had some buckwheat and some longer pieces that couldn't be separated by a screen. So most seed clean plants use a width separator, a density separator, and a length separator all in a line in order to make sure they get everything out. Now we saw with those hand screens, you could only do a small amount of grain at once, and you wouldn't want to be doing thousands and thousands of bushels that way. You will want something like this. This is our density cleaner, more on this one in detail later, but it cleans 300 to 600 bushels an hour depending on what you're doing and how bad of a job it is. Or you could use something like this. This is our little Jezdal 5-in-1. It's slow, like 20 to 50 bushels an hour, but it's got five different stages, so there's an awful lot of things it can clean and not many things it can't do. More on this one in its own video. And this is our rotary screen machine. It'll do about 300-ish bushels an hour depending on what you're doing and only separates by width in one stage. All right. So we're going to talk about the air cleaner quick. We're just going to walk around it a bit so you can guys can take a look at it. So this machine, I do believe, was built in Ukraine, which uh, makes operating it kind of interesting because the owner's manual is uh, not in a language I understand, and the translation was done by somebody who I don't think understands either language very well. So this machine is very simple. It operates in only one of the, uh, the characteristics of grain we talked about, and that is density. It separates things by how much they weigh versus how big they are. So things that are very dense, fall down easily and things that are very light blow away. So how this machine works, grain enters the hopper up here, it comes down and right here is the bottom of this hopper. It's sloped up here, sloped like this. And so grain comes down right here. This, this handle actually opens and closes a gate right here. And so grain flows out here and it comes out and drops down here. 
make narrow so you guys can see, kind of, sort of. So the grain comes down this direction. Now, at the same time, there is a fan down here that blows air up this way. It actually comes up on an angle and goes like this. So now we have air heading out and upwards towards that uh, the discharge there. So we have grain coming down and we have air going across like so. And so we can vary how much grain falls out and we can also vary the air blast. So what happens when that air blast hits the grain is the light things get carried off in the air and the heavy things continue to fall. So they fall down here. Now each of these is attached to a gate little panel inside just like it so you can move it like this so we're kind of going to draw a bigger arc here so heavy things are going to fall very easily right down here and lighter things are going to end up down here or coming out the chute so as we move these gates like this there are different discharge chutes there's one coming this way one to the other side one this way one to the other side so you can vary which side you want the stuff to fall on so usually what i do is i flip the handles in such a way that all of the clean grain comes out of here and the screenings goes to the other side. Because I want the rocks to fall down here, and then I want the grain to be coming out right around here. These two, you can see the paint's worn off of them. I try to have the grain coming out here, and that would mean that the screenings are gonna end up being on this, this part of the spectrum on the other side. It only has two motors. It has a vibratory conveyor up in the middle there, as well as it has the fan down at the bottom. This is the fan motor over here. Those two motors are controlled by uh, VFDs inside here because they're three phase motors. So we can actually change the RPMs of the, end, the motors very, very easily. So it's a very simple machine to run because there's very few controls for it. There's uh, no screens to change. There's very few moving parts. So it's gonna take it a very long time to wear out. So this machine will probably be around for quite a while. We spent about $13,000 on this machine. I think they're about 16,000 to buy as they are now. Now I'm really lazy and I don't like to have to babysit this machine. So I put a switch up in the hopper in the top to turn the auger on. And when the hopper gets full, it also turns the auger off. This makes sure the machine always has grain sitting on the top of it, but I don't have to sit there and babysit it. And it still means the machine can be portable because it doesn't have a bin on top of it. Eventually I'd like to get it in a seed cleaning plant so I don't have to set up augers and all this nonsense outside. I hope you've enjoyed this video on grain cleaning. If you want to see more content like this, please hang around as I'm going to be trying to make an in-depth video like this about once every week or so. If you have not much of a knowledge of farming and you want to get started, please check out our playlist Farming in 5 Minutes or Less, where we go over some of the basic processes as well as the machinery that we use. If you want to hear me run my trap boat politics and other things with my opinion, please check out the Chill Pill playlist. Thanks for watching and see you next time.